Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the second episode, that's right, second episode of Chip Out Ironicast for January of 2015. How y'all doing? How are you doing? I'm doing good, except Great. for my back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing fantastic, but I sure wasn't yesterday. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> that might come up if I want to be gross. Oh, but, boy. Uh, things that are definitely going to come up, we've got a few topics for you today. The first is Wonderful 101 and how wonderful it's been. Mm -hmm. uh yeah uh some holiday tales and uh uh agdic am i reading this right agdic is that a thing i think so yeah whatever we'll That's figure how it i out. read it and uh once again an ask segment uh we got an interesting question from one of y'all folks so we're gonna get to that at the end of the show but first the start of the show wonderful 101 we're finished ish we're pretty, pretty darn finished. Pr pretty much finished. Uh, I have been working on today, but didn't finish uh, the first of two bonus videos. Two? I thought it was going to be one, but th there is enough bonus stuff to do to fill up two videos. Wow. Uh, yeah. That it's just there's a lot of unlockable stuff, and then there is uh, there is a, a secret chapter, and that's mm -hmm. its own video. Well, I guess that makes sense. If you're going to have a whole... Every other chapter has been its own video. Why shouldn't the secret chapter be? Yeah, it's you know. it's a long one. It's like an hour. <laughs> it's going to be cut down just because it's there's no like story or anything. It's just like a, a special combat arena style thing. Oh, OK. Uh, it's fun, though. You get a cool thing for beating it. Uh, I guess the question will be what goes up first, those videos or this podcast? It's going to be a race. Uh, probably this podcast. Probably. OK. Yeah. But uh, just some things to remind people at home, if you aren't aware, uh, our first stuff went up at the end of June, so it's a six-month project-ish. Yeah. Uh, although we started, you started recording things about a year ago, right? Over a year ago. Over a year ago. Like, probably like 15 months now. Which has got to make it our longest in pre-production, uh, by far. Maybe it might actually be beaten by... Or at least tied with uh, Peace Walker. Oh, because yeah, yeah. When Snark Cookie and I did that, we originally were doing it when the game was only on the PSP. So we played through, like, I don't know, past the first boss fight, maybe, on the PSP. And then many months passed because all, like, we, maybe a week or two after we had done that, they announced the HD version. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to wait for that one to come out, and then we did that. So there was like a right. good eight-month gap between the first recording and then actually recording all that. And that was a long LP. Um, but yeah, that this has been, uh, you know, it's a long game. It's like 15 hours. But uh, fr from now on, with our double update stuff... Yeah, it... That, that would have been like a three-month project. That would have been like a three- or four-month thing yeah. if it had been double updates and, you know, not random random three-week no-update gaps. Ah, uh, well, that's life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just like why I've only been able to do, like, a stream the past week and a half or so. Uh, but I will be back home on Thursday, so then everything go back to normal. Hooray. 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 Uh, but it's been it's been so much fun doing this one. Uh, yeah, happy to do it, and kind of sad to see it gone. Except for all the great stuff that's coming afterwards. So that, yeah, that's a that consolation stuff is yeah. going to be pretty. You know, since we've already recorded some some stuff for the later stuff, that I'm excited for that just because of how funny and broken it's going to be. <laughs> um, yes, the bad uncle duology coming uh -huh. at you. Mm -hmm. The wonderful one hundred and one. I was really happy to, to do a game like that just because, you know, with the past year and a half, maybe even two years of game releases, a lot of them feel very cynical, both with right. how they are made and marketed and also with how they are written. So it was just nice to have a super, a game that was incredibly optimistic, uh, both in how it was written and like, you know, how, what kind of character Wonder Red was and also mm -hmm. like how the game was full of content and had no DLC or microtransactions. <laughs> that Just part. Just a, a four-color breath of fresh air. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I think one thing that definitely sticks out was a lot of fun is doing a live episode. That was a great yeah, experience. Yeah, that I was really happy to do that, especially having it be the Lambo fight. 
Like, I thought if there's anything from that game to show off to people who have never even seen or heard of the game beforehand and still have them, like, understand what's happening in what is a pretty complex game, mm-hmm. uh, it would be the Lambo fight. It's both. <laughs> it's easy to understand that you're fighting a big three-headed dragon with the dragon man on it. And it's also yeah, really cool to watch. That's so. pretty run of the mill. You, you can get on that. Yeah. Pretty simply. No, it, it was so much fun to uh, to have the big panel we had. It was what six people? Yeah, it was six people up there, yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, eighty or so uh, in, in the room there along with us. That was so much fun. Yeah. A uh, lot of energy. I still remember when I when I put that episode up on YouTube. Uh, there were people going, "I don't like this fake audience gag." It's like, no. <laughs> I thought I made it clear enough that it was it's, real. <laughs> it's we we have pictures of the audience. I can share them with mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> haven't mentioned this before, so I'm springing this on you live <gasps> on recording. Oh my but God. I think it would be really cool uh, mm-hmm. to use our new Patreon funds for like. To, to do that more often, like go to, uh, you know, just to cover travel expenses and yeah. submit that idea to other shows. Maybe. 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 Yeah, that, that is definitely yeah. something uh, I would like to do more we'll see of. see if, I don't know, who's accepting submissions now. Some of the PAXs. Is MAGFest closed for submissions yet? No, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. There, there are so many PAXs now. We'll look. There's like eight. Look, let's just go to PAX Australia. I know a guy who can get us some tickets to Australia. All right. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> but that'd be fun. Yeah. Although uh, I might be doing uh, another C two E two thing. I uh, submitted mm. a live six feet under uh, thing with them. Oh, awesome! Yeah. We are right now in that like two week gap bef- uh, after they stop taking submissions and before they start responding to them. So who knows? Uh, who knows? Hmm. Uh, speaking of, like, it was during this six months that that really, I think, took off. That we branched out from, uh, just just saying how long it's been. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, branched off from just doing uh, the thirteenth page stuff into it being its own umbrella network, which is so satisfying, mm-hmm. and I'm so proud of it. <laughs> And the next one we're recording this next week is going to be so great. Oh man! One thing <laughs> Just I like I, all the others. One thing I don't think I ever mentioned was I don't know who did it. I think you might have mentioned it once before, but I really like the logo for Six Feet on Six Feet yes, Under. Yes, yes. It's uh oh, I forget the person who did it. It's uh, a revision of a design from Ix, one of our members. Oh, okay. But it was contracted out to one of the people that Patreon pays for all of our art uh. and uh, custom music and etc that explains why it looks so good yeah <laughs> other things that happened in the last six months uh any meet any personal life goals uh, during the time of the wonderful 101 let's play uh oh god what did happen with my life during the wonderful 101 <laughs> uh i mean i definitely did more actual career related things so now i don't feel nearly as worthless that's pretty cool that is great uh, I actually have like a proper resume now instead of things like, well, I did an internship once. Oh, God, I need real experience. But uh, yeah, all that stuff happened. It was it's hard to keep track of when that happened. But uh, as long as it was in the second half of 2014, that happened. And now I am uh, looking for other real video jobs. And it turns out Nintendo needs somebody. So. So, if you're listening to this and you happen to be Mr. Nintendo... Hi, Reggie. Uh, hey. uh, <laughs> yeah. Hi, uh, that one person's uncle from Nintendo. <laughs> There's a lot of uncles. That That's going to be the good uncle series after the bad uncle series. Is Reggie's somebody's uncle? Wouldn't that be weird to have Reggie as your uncle? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> There's somebody on a playground saying, no, you have to believe me. I really have an uncle. <laughs> He's like done top two. Nobody <laughs> believes me. Splatoon, guys. But yeah, I was really happy to do something like the wonderful one one just because you don't see games with that much heart come along too often. And it was I think it was also pretty fun to do that game just because, you know, it was a Wii U game, uh, which... Not a lot of people have, on top of being a platinum game, 
one of the hardest ones as well, which means even less people played it because of that. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So, that, you know, like when I do like Uncharted and stuff, you know, I know there's going to be a fair amount of people in the thread is like, oh, yeah, I played this too. This part sucked or whatever. Uh, or, uh, you know, talking about the story and they know what's mm-hmm, happening ahead mm-hmm. of time. And I feel like this time around, most of the thread and most of the people watching the videos were people who had no idea what was going to happen in that game. You get such a sense of, uh, I don't know, engagement from that. Like people are uh, uh, sitting there and they can't wait to see what happens next. And that's yeah. a really fun uh, sort of energy you get from the audience that you don't get from a, a more, you know, million seller blockbuster game like Uncharted, like uh, uh, Metal Gear Solid, which are, you know, classics in the field that even if you don't play, everyone knows, right? Yeah, I was, I, you know, I always read the comments and on our videos. Oh, you uh, poor thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, okay, for most of the time, it's fine. Most of the time. You uh, guys are mostly really good. They, there are multiple people in the comments who post a lot, and they're all fine. They're cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's some weird people every once in a while. But, uh, yeah, I, I, when I would read the comments for, like, the 101 videos, uh, there were people who would always be freaking out after it ended and asking me to post the next one. And there was one person who said, this is the best TV show. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I'd watch that show. I would That's watch that show. That's my favorite anime. <laughs> that reminds me, have you ever watched the Beautiful Joe anime? Uh, wasn't it on like Saturday mornings on like it, Fox? It was on WB. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. I watched a few episodes as a child. I also watched a few episodes, but it was like, it's, if I remember correctly, it was pretty low budget. I didn't like it very much. It made very little sense. It it was very low budget, and the animation was very slow for a game it property that is very fast. It didn't remind me very, very much of the game at all, really. Yeah. Like, this is not the mood or sense I get from playing them. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm I'm glad you're canceled, beautiful Joe show. Screw oh, you. God. I hate you. Mm, oh no. It's kinda weird how like for a little while Beautiful Joe actually was like a thing. Like a, <laughs> a little franchise. Like it had one and two, yeah, it, had it had the like DS a game. Smash Brothers game. It had a Smash Brothers style game that wasn't very good, but Cap- <laughs> Capcom was running with it. It had its own cartoon for a little bit. I think it had a comic book, maybe. Come back to us, Joe. Come back. But like yeah. the the real Joe, not the cartoon. The real version. Joe. He sucks. Number one Joe. <laughs> <laughs> at, at least Sylvia jumped ship and she got to be in Wonderful 101. Yeah. yeah. At, least, at least that happened. So uh, what was your favorite part of, uh, of the game or of doing the game or just some happy oh, memory man. of the um, last six months? I mean, the very first boss fight. Yeah. is definitely up there is one of the best parts just like best parts of the game for me and also for for actually doing that part um it, it's great to have that out of uh, that sort of meta game knowledge of this is the first boss there are more to come <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is chapter one yeah well i was also pretty happy with um well like the response to but also my favorite parts were um level 6b with the flashback chapter Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that part is awesome, just the way it's presented with the music when you fight Lambo all by yourself, and I think like all the little design changes they did, like all the wonderful 101 or the the one the wonderful one outfits were a little older looking, even though it was only like 20 years prior. <laughs> <laughs> PSR was a TV with a fan on the back. I just like that it, it was. I just loved the whole presentation of that flashback thing, mm-hmm. uh, and then. Probably the other two big parts I love are the punch, the very first punch out boss fight because you're not expecting that, uh, the Vorkin fight, the final one, and then the final, the entire final chapter, really. Yeah, the, the last two chapters. Uh, yeah, really everything after you come out of Vorkin and the, it's a relentless. I guess that sounds kind of negative, but just mm-hmm. a, a ruthless, uh, <laughs> hateful. No, no, anything but that. Uh, but uh, uh, nonstop, a uh, uh, ramping up of scale and dedication, and like it's on, and it keeps getting increasingly more on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. Kamiya, him, he does end like most of his games, mm-hmm. where you always think it's going to end here, and then it doesn't. And even though I know that's how his games go now, he still tricks me somehow. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, I just love how 
that game had so many parts where it could have been the ending to any other game, and it said, no, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to top it some other way. And it doesn't even... And, and because you're so uh, uh, invested in the team and so hyped to keep going, it's not like... Uh, like when you say, oh, no, we're just going to keep going, there's no uh, stagnation. There's no... What am I thinking of? <laughs> you don't get worn out. <laughs> yeah, it never feels like, oh, man, it's still going. It doesn't feel like it drags on. It's just like, oh, it's going even more awesome. So uh, I'm going to have to go with, yeah, that, that whole ending two, three chapters is definitely my favorite part of the game. Yeah. But you can't have that without the rest of it, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and P-Star, my, my little buddy, <laughs> my partner in arms and uh i just i just want to hang out with a, a little <laughs> beep booper that can't even really do anything with me yeah i just want to be his friend <laughs> well, i'm sure his hands are very comfortable to shake because they are made out of game controllers <laughs> that's that's the technical designation for his model right beep booper that's yeah, what he beep is booper. okay mm -hmm. and yeah i think wonder red is one of my favorite characters in a while because you know he even though he only has a couple specific like character traits i feel like they did them really well mm -hmm. and it's weird that i think wonder red is a better written character than most characters in the past couple years of video games even though he's just like a superman even if you only have a few traits if being earnest is one of them you're on <laughs> yeah. my short list yeah just <laughs> like even if you're an earnestly an asshole as long as you've got that in there mm -hmm. i'm I'm on board. I'm on board. It's especially after like the last year where I played a bunch of games with protagonists like fucking uh, what's his face from Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Like with those big games, like the couple of characters they know how to write kind of, mm -hmm. or at least ones they've been sticking with, it's always like a cynical asshole or a Han Solo character. And Black Flag was like the Han Solo guy. So it's like, he's nice, but he can do bad things some i guess mm -hmm. and i don't know it's really i'm really tired of it and just having a basic superman guy like wonder red uh was really refreshing i love superman me too okay his, his super frictionless feet <laughs> oh that was the best uh yeah <laughs> So uh, if you've been listening the last 20 minutes or so and have no idea what we've been talking about, check out our wonderful 101 Let's Play. It's complete. It's fantastic. We are so, so very proud of it. And we mm -hmm. really want you to, to check it out. And if you do agree, if you have checked it out, tell a friend. Spread it around. Yeah. Uh, get some love for the game. Get some love for our videos. Why not? We deserve it. We're special, boys. <laughs> <laughs> That's what is written on my shirt. And the boys is, ends with a Z. Oh, yeah. It, special and, boys. It has tildes on either side. Well, if we ever open a merch shop, Special Boys, that's uh, that's the first t-shirt. Funny, funny thing about that, uh, there were, like, I don't know, maybe a year or so ago or something, it's in a notebook somewhere, uh, but I remember I was thinking, like, what if I did some shirts or something? Uh, there was one that wasn't inspired by anything, I just decided, what if there was a shirt that just said Handsome Boy on it? <laughs> uh, so the idea was, it was going to be a Handsome Boy button, like, bubble letters, Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and I don't, I have a really good design drawn down somewhere and I still want to do it someday. I'm excited for my beautiful boy t-shirt to come in the mail. So. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't get that shirt, unfortunately. Uh, well, I did. Oh uh, man, I'm jealous. <laughs> so, uh, we've talked about the last six months. Let's talk about something a little more recent. Move on to mm. our next segment. Uh, how was your holidays? How was that? How's life? It was pretty good. You're still on what is sort of a holiday trip, even though it's longer than just, you know. <laughs> yeah, I am visiting family uh, a couple states away. And yeah, they it was pretty fun for the most part. Uh, it, was, it was a lot more Christmas preparation than I've usually experienced at mm -hmm. home. Because like our whole thing at home for Christmas is like, uh, we don't do any, well... Sometimes we might have, like, my grandma over, and that's it for, like, Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. And then Christmas is, hey, we got our presents. Okay, cool. Go play with your presents and also take a nap. And then maybe <laughs> we'll have dinner with grandma. And that's it. That's what Christmas is for me. It's awesome. The, the traditional Christmas nap uh, is yeah. observed in many cultures. <laughs> uh, this year, it was, you know, meeting uh, way more people, uh, seeing way more people I haven't seen in a while. 
And so it was like a big old huge event on Christmas Eve, and then on Christmas it was a whole big old thing again. It was like, oh man, but I had I wanted to play Captain Toad, but it's like no, <laughs> put it back underneath the tree. I want to play Captain Toad too. But Captain Toad is really good. It's a it's a bigger dilemma for you, I'd imagine, as someone who owns it. Uh, it's time for adventure. But yeah, it, it was overall it was a, it was a very nice Christmas. A lot more. Uh, active than my Christmases have been for the past few years because they are generally pretty lazy Christmases where not much happens. Uh, I went to Medieval Times. Tell me everything about Medieval Times. Wait, wait, do they have a special, like, holidays program at Medieval Times? Do they decorate? No, there there wasn't anything else different about it. It was just that there was a part where... The, the narrator just wishes everybody happy holidays and all that stuff. Oh, well, that's that's nice. That's the least they could do. Okay. It seemed everything else was the same. But I, again, this is the only time I've ever been to medieval times. <laughs> um, but the, it was a whole thing where somebody was like, hey, I've never been to one of these. I want to go. I got a, I found a group on. So it was like thirty five or forty dollars instead of like 80 bucks per person. And so I went in there. I didn't know what to expect. I thought medieval times was just like you know you get food you get chicken and you eat it with your hands because they laugh at you if you ask for silverware mm -hmm. and off to the side there are just some random dudes who joust in the background so it's the same as any given sushi restaurant yeah okay i didn't know it wasn't just dudes jousting in the background i like i didn't know it was like a whole show it, it was ba it's basically like a circus kind of yeah yeah and i was blown away by how dumb it was <laughs> and i loved it you know i wonder if they don't mention the holidays because out of a sense of like historical accuracy because medieval times is rigorously accurate yeah uh like, there was they, they don't want to segregate the crowd based on their religion they they don't want to well, like okay if you celebrate christmas mm -hmm. you're cool any of you hanukkah people you have to be segregated over there and you don't get any rights and we aren't actually going to serve you Oh, damn. Then they get sued, so they have to just deny the whole holiday season. It's the mm -hmm. only way to be safe, legally. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, I went in there, and I was like, I didn't know it was going to be that big inside, because it holds, <laughs> like, 400 people or something. Because it was like, oh, I guess they only do one show per day, usually. So, it's, like, in six different sections with different colored lighting in each, each section, so you know which colored knight you're supposed to root for. I was in the red section. I love the Red Knight. He was the youngest and also cutest knight in the whole gang of knights. That's what I hear. He's a, he's a little cutie pie. I like to imagine every Medieval Times is the same Medieval Times. Like, ev every exterior leads to the same shared interior in the magical realm. <laughs> oh, that's right. The Red Knight really knew how to work the crowd. Yeah. Uh, he, was, he was loving it. He was eating that shit up. Uh, we had lots of drunk people. Uh, in our section, so... I imagine you have to be to get through a Medieval Times show. <laughs> yeah, uh, I figured, I thought, after it all happened, I thought if I ever went to a Medieval Times again, I would have to be drunk to have fun again. Because, like, the first time, I was only a little tipsy, because the drinks there are expensive, not surprising. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I would definitely have to be drunk next time. The food was actually not that bad. I was expecting it to be bad. Uh, the chicken? Not bad. Get a whole, like, half of chicken. Uh, they said that you get ribs. That's a lie. You get one rib. <laughs> one rib, and it was really dry. Get rid of that rib. I hate it. As long as you come with at least one friend, you get ribs. Between <laughs> you, you get ribs. <laughs> I suppose so. Uh, and then, yeah, there was, like, tomato bisque soup or something. That was good. There was, quote-unquote, castle bread. It was just Texas <laughs> toast. But that's castle fine. Castle bread. They called it castle bread. Did they and cut it in the shape of a castle? <laughs> I, it was not cut in the shape of a castle, and I was really upset when it wasn't. That's garbage. Come on. Because it was like their their whole menu is on the napkin. Because, you know, you don't order anything unless you're vegetarian. Then you go, can I have the vegetarian meal, please? May I simply have cabbage? <laughs> Otherwise, you just get, you know, the, the same meal as everybody else. The, the soup, the, the castle toast or castle bread or whatever the hell. There's like a half of a potato, baked potato. That was pretty good. So everything is just in parts. You get half of a ribs so that it is only rib. You get half of a chicken. Mm -hmm. You get half of a potato. Yeah. 
And then, then there's a, a full dessert, at least. It, it was sounds like a, like a dating service. Like, you have to pair up to get a whole meal. Yeah, it's... Well, I mean, the, the half chicken is pretty decent, at least. Uh, it's a pretty decent amount of meat. I, I mean, and by the end, I was pretty full. But also, I'm a small man. <laughs> so, n it doesn't take a lot to fill me up, I suppose. Uh, the dessert thing was like an apple turnover thing. that was really flaky. It was pretty good, actually. Um, the whole act was so dumb. There was, The narrator who is just doing stuff constantly. Uh, he was like, you know, in the middle of the, the big dirt pit in the, the middle of the place, walking around on his horse while it's bowing and doing dumbass little horse dances. Uh, <laughs> look, that and... horse is doing the best it can. <laughs> it was an impressive horse stance, but I think horses look hilarious. That horse has been in the business for 30 years. But yeah, he's like always narrating stuff, and he had a super like bombastic, hilarious voice to the point that I thought he was just lip syncing to like a professional dubbing that every medieval times uses but no <laughs> it was his voice it was just his voice was so good so right when you get your food the second they plot the chicken right in front of your face is when they start reading all of the paid announcements and birthdays ah yes the paid announcements and birthdays a tradition known throughout all the realms of the Holy Roman Empire. The narrator dude is up with the, the king and uh, the, the princess, and they have a sweet job because they don't really have to go anywhere. They have to act like three times maybe, and they get to eat while they're up there. Because uh, like that, that king, also the king was hilarious because uh, he wasn't, he had a weird accent that he was not trying to hide at all. So everybody else was doing these hilarious medieval times like accents, and then there's this other dude who's like, I'm the king. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna say no? He will have you executed. <laughs> uh but yeah, the like the second the chicken's right there, and you're like, hell yeah, this chicken's actually pretty good. And then the narrator dude just comes up and he just unrolls this thing. This scroll, and then he just, he and the princess just start reading all these birthdays, and it's like, and congratulations to Terry on his 14th birthday! <laughs> and everybody's supposed to go, woo! And start clapping. Yeah. And there's so many of them that the audience gets fucking tired of wooing <laughs> after, like, a minute. And th th there was a point where he was, like, he read off a birthday, and everybody was just like, woo! And, you know, clearly eating instead of listening to these fucking birthdays. And he just stops and he says, I can read very slowly. You better start wooing more or else. And so <laughs> then everybody, like, everybody's time was held hostage. Well, I mean, imagine you're, you're like, uh, uh, the one on the end of the list. <laughs> you deserve just as much woo as the person who's on top. It's the alphabet's fault, not yours. Yeah, I was, I got pretty tired of wooing by the end, though. It was like a solid 15 minutes of having to go, woo, and then woo, because you have chicken in your mouth. It's a good thing they don't do, like, three shows a day, because you'd start with the king, like, uh, Henry VIII from The Tudors, mm -hmm. and then as the career goes on, you get Henry VIII from History. <laughs> and that's not a good, that's not a good look. There, there's a part where uh, they bring out a falconer you know mm -hmm. he's got he's got the gauntlet on or whatever and he's got a falcon perched on it and it's while everybody had just gotten their chicken like after the birthdays and stuff and it's like look my king i have a falcon and then you know he has the falcon fly around the whole place and he flies like right over your head too and then like while the bird was flying the narrator dude was like slide a scroll open and is like do not try to feed it food its talons <laughs> are very fucking sharp and so people were still waving at this falcon well, it like went right over their heads, and while it did like its third pass around, it flew right into the the lighting rafters. <laughs> uh, it didn't like like to land, or did it just like? No, it flew into it by oh, accident, gosh. and so you saw it hit it, and just went bong, and all this dust that was on the top just slowly f floated down to the ground, and like it recovered pretty quickly. But it looked really fucking confused for a they couple seconds. They probably have to pay more for falcon insurance than horse food. <laughs> I felt really bad for that falcon. He hit his head right on that thing, but oh. he he seemed to be okay. He landed uh, on the guy's gauntlet, and he he didn't seem shaken or anything. He got a snack. This this is an open air restaurant. That falcon <laughs> can get, get snacks anytime it wants. Yeah, like, I was also really worried. Like, couldn't the falcon technically poop on your food? Yes, like, could that, yes, that could, could happen. I I was so worried that the falcon was going to poop on me or somebody else. 
and it'd be really awkward. Maybe there's a, like a little bag hanging from the rear of the Falcon, like uh, like horse-drawn oh, carriages. Maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. How closely did you check out the rump of this falcon? Not very closely okay. because I was eating. I was looking at the chicken that was on the table. How closely did you check out the rump of the chicken on the table? Uh, very closely. Okay. Uh, I had my priorities straight. Uh, but yeah, it was like the once it got to like the there's like an act there's a little story throughout the games. It's you know there's some dude from another kingdom or something, and he wants the the princess as his bride, and he's a dick. So it's all about the danger of foreigners. Uh, yeah, okay. pretty much. Uh, but when he first comes there, is like, look, I want the princess as my bride. Here's a gift. And like some dude with like blood paint on his face just comes in on a horse. And then the horse starts dancing to like this uh, orchestrated music with a ton of electric guitar in the background. Because they had that back then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and then I think... It's playing the song Tequila. Okay. Yeah. I think something was happening backstage that was preventing people from moving on with the act because that fucking horse danced for like 15 minutes <laughs> that song looped at least three times <laughs> like i th i'm pretty sure like there were because the horse was dancing you know around the whole dirt pit and so there's one side where all the horse is coming from and every time that dude danced right by that opening he was always looking and like talking to somebody like come on get out the other May fucking I horses have the other half of my potato i have <laughs> finished this half of the potato now like at first i thought maybe the act was just really long and i was not as impressed by this horse dance as everybody else was <laughs> but i think they were just waiting for the horses to get their shit together or something. Maybe one of the horses was in his trailer, like, throwing a hissy fit. Yeah, yeah, that that is a total diva horse. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, I really enjoyed the choreographed fighting. Most of it was actually pretty decent. Uh, it looked like it could have potentially hurt really bad. Apparently, they're, you know, they, they have prop weapons, but they're still... Mm -hmm. They still look pretty dangerous, and you know, because when they were hitting each other, sparks were flying off them and shit. They uh, they they coat them in like magnesium powder. Oh yeah, well. <laughs> I actually I like I was I looked. Real up, swords do not do that. They, yeah, they just don't. I was assuming that it was coated with something to to make this sparks happen, but uh, I mean, they still looked kind of heavy, and they still mm -hmm. sounded mm -hmm. like they would fucking hurt if you got hit by them. But uh, I found out that those like those knights get paid like only eighteen bucks an hour. Yeah. For, for all the shit they have to do like apparently and they don't they, even get to eat the half chicken yeah and apparently the the people uh like the the wait staff and stuff make more money than the knights do just because they get tipped and the knights can't <laughs> <laughs> you can't just like throw a 20 down and hope it flutters all the I, way into the dirt yeah like okay you can probably look, go to the dancing horse anyhow. look if you yeah. can lance this 20 dollar bill <laughs> while your horse is at full sprint out of my hand you get to keep it yeah it was really dumb I enjoyed it, for the most part. It was you, pretty entertaining. Do you know my medieval times story? I've been pretending that <laughs> yeah. I've never been to medieval times. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. You, you, so uh, I'm just going to tell it to, to the folks at home. <laughs> when I went to medieval times, I immediately thought of you in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, yeah, you, you were talking about how they, they do birthday announcements. A lot of people do it for birthdays. Uh, Mostly kids. Most, Yeah, uh, what, what was the, the oldest one, like 12-ish? Well, like, when I was there, there were, there were a fair amount of, like, 14-year-olds. There were a couple times where it's like, these college kids are celebrating the end of winter break. <laughs> uh, there was, like, one or two married couples or something, but it was Aww. mostly kids around the ages of, like, 4 to 16. See, when most people get bored in their marriages, they go to, like, a, an adult bookstore. They don't go to medieval <laughs> times. <laughs> Maybe uh, they'd already done that once. I, it didn't work. All, all that's left is, is <laughs> dancing horses. Sorry, honey. That's, that's what our life is now. Uh, but no, uh, a few years ago, my parents took me to medieval times for my birthday. Mm -hmm. For my 21st <laughs> birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you what all those kids did. All right. They, they all got to take a picture with the king and queen and they got to kneel and be knighted. And I will tell you right now, none of them had a choice in the matter. I speak from experience. <laughs> so there exists a picture of me staring a death, just death in my eyes at the camera. It is my lowest moment in my life. If I do anything to harm my lovely wife, she has this picture. It will be shared. Like, this mm -hmm. is the nuclear option. This is, <laughs> this is her blackmail against me. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I I totally remember the day you came back from that. Like the next time I talked to you after, <laughs> I was a weak and broken man. You were, and I just remember you just told me you went to medieval times, and then you, you didn't say anything else. You just showed me the picture, and I was so confused because I didn't even know what medieval times was at was at that time because I never watched cable guy. So I, why would I know? Uh, and and so yeah, they they do that part of the announcements and like hey, yeah. eighth birthday, ninth birthday, seventh, twelfth birthday, and then they get to twenty first birthday, <laughs> and the yays were just kind of like they they were lower. Yay! There was confusion. I think everyone was looking to the person next to them and wondering. Is there like a special needs guy here no, in no. medieval times today? And how can I ask that and not sound like a jerk for asking? God, I just keep thinking of the picture. Uh, <laughs> you have not seen this in years, and you I, can. <laughs> it's so it's like burned into my mind. Like this. That's what I was going for while looking at the camera. It's it's that moment where you know your parents don't love you anymore. This is what they've done to me. Oh no. Yeah, it was like the second that Medieval Times Groupon got mentioned, I was like, Medieval Times? Oh, I only know it because of this picture. I know that you can get knighted and it's embarrassing. Oh, it's it's the worst. Yeah. The thing is, this, this is how y'all know that I'm a generous and kind person. We were also celebrating my mother's birthday. Oh, And okay. there was time to get her on the list, but I took the high road. Oh, <laughs> Well, that's nice of you. I, I was the bigger man in this situation. <laughs> Better remember that, Ma. Yeah. If I remember from the picture, weren't you like almost the same height as the guy anyways, even though you're <laughs> kneeling because he's also sitting down and you're tall? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, God, but that's great. I love that. Since uh, we heard about your wonderful uh, and exciting holiday, do you mm -hmm. want to hear about my worst Christmas? Oh, God, I had seen, I had heard some things, but I don't know any of the details, so yes, what well, happened? Well, I mean, you were part of my worst Christmas. There, there's a, a part where you, you show up in it. Oh, one of the, one of the okay. bright parts. It's last year. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking maybe you meant this year. <laughs> oh, no. That's been going on for years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, last year, for those of you who live in uh, the, the Midwest, especially Michigan, you might remember right around Christmas itself. Oh, shit. Was a that's a horrible, right. horrible ice storm that knocked out uh, power for most of the state. Uh, especially the parts where I was staying with in-laws. So, uh, to, to get the picture, you have to know where my in-laws live in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. where, uh, there are no services around. And, uh, because living in the middle of nowhere, you know, they're, they're on a, uh, a well and a bunch of other things that mean mm -hmm. if you have no power, you have no heat. You have no running water, so you have no flushing toilets, you have no shower of any temperature. Uh, you have nothing to do but just sit around in the living room and stare at one another. <laughs> yep. Also, th these are people, they're, they're the sort of family where uh, th their biggest pastime is just pushing each other's buttons and then acting surprised when someone gets upset <laughs> about it. Oh, God. So that's all there really was to do for Five days. Oh, God. It's the most wonderful time. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> it was awful. It was, it was the worst. Uh, we had two generators running. Uh, so we had uh, the sump pump running in the basement to make sure the basement did not flood and freeze. Mm -hmm. A space heater in the living room to go along <laughs> with our many uh, layers of blankets. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And a power strip to charge phones so I could complain about it on Twitter the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I definitely remember this now. <laughs> when I met you, I really wanted you to take, take you and your wife back to my house because I was one of the people who, who was like two streets away from all the people yes. who had no power. So y you were lucky enough to have power by that time, right? We never lost power. You never lost power. Yeah. And my aunt, because of family stuff, Christmas is three days, right? Uh, for me, Christmas Eve is my dad and his side of the family. Christmas Day is just the in-laws, even though they put us up. So they kind of get half of every other day, too. Mm. And uh, the 26th is my mom. So okay. Christmas Eve, 
going to my aunt's place, which is where my dad's side does their thing, and it's the best, and I love it. It's the one. I love the holiday season. I love the events. I love the decorations. I love the spirit. Me too. The actual specific holidays themselves, like the dates, Mm -hmm. I really only like Christmas Eve. (laughs) Yeah. So driving there, we uh, met up with you for lunch just because we could, and it's good to connect with friends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we must have been horrible. I'm so sorry. We unshaven, unshowered, you know, I don't slept. Just two miserable creatures washing up and trying to have a nice (laughs) lunch with a friend. I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. Like you guys, you guys did look pretty miserable. And then you told me why. I was like, okay, that is completely understandable. Uh, oh. I don't remember you guys looking too messed up. At least, oh, I was, I, f- <laughs> I about <laughs> fell asleep in my burger. Oh God, I don't remember what I ordered, but there's like a ninety percent chance it was a burger. Where so. we ate, I'm pretty sure it was a burger. Yeah, okay. you guys gave me a Justin Bieber ornament. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. It has been on the tree for two years in a row now. <laughs> But uh, after doing th- the whole Christmas Eve thing at my aunt's, she put us up for the night, and we stayed, and got to shower, and mm-hmm. felt better, and then go back into the, the walk-in freezer that is my in-law's home. And uh, <laughs> also, the worst part was the nights, because you, we didn't all sleep in the living room with the, the space heater. Right. We all broke up into bedrooms, and, and so... We, my wife and I shared her childhood twin bed. Oh. With my head and feet hanging off uh, uh, the top and bottom. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I, if you still have a... If any of you are, say, 13, 14, and you still have a twin bed, I want to tell you right now, your parents are trying to make sure you never have sex in their home. <laughs> That's the only reason. Now, if you're a parent, and, and I just figured out your, your dastardly scheme, let me tell you, that's not going to do it. They're just going to have really bad sex. I'm sorry to tell you. That's not how teenagers work. <laughs> just think back to yourself back then. You'll know I'm right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in any case, I'm taking the drafty side because it's about as well insulated as, I don't know, any given swimsuit, this house. Uh, oh, the worst night, though, is when the one generator died because the ground wire fell off. So it, oh. it wouldn't run. So the and they were out of butane in the uh, uh, welding torch, so they had to run an electric welding torch. So they had to turn off everything just to get enough power from the one generator to into the welding torch to <laughs> fix the other one. While my fingers are freezing off, it's like <laughs> oh thirty God. degree wind chill. You should have just lit the fucking house on fire. <laughs> Somehow, even that that house wouldn't be warm, even if we're burning. All right. So this year was an improvement. I gotta say. All right. Good. At least, at least you were. Everything had heat the whole time, right? Everything that had worked in previous years was working this year. Yes. Okay. Hooray. And yeah, if if you uh, apparently the way to get the big bed is to herniate a couple discs, and then people take pity on you. So. Oh Jesus. So, so that, that was better off all around. Uh, yeah. Man, I forgot that happened then. Oh, yeah. Oh, geez. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, this, not long ago at all, just last week even, uh, the biggest news in gaming's got to be Awesome Games Done Quick. Yeah. Ag, ag dick. I'm just going to call it Ag Dick. <laughs> that was a gag, and now it's a thing. So if you don't know, uh, there is this thing called Speedruns. You heard about this? Uh, what? But yeah, yeah. People play games really fast. Oh wow, that's so weird. And people like watching people play games really fast. I can't imagine anyone actually wanting to see someone else play a video game. It just boggles me. Yeah, it makes like literally no, no sense. sense. No. Uh, <laughs> if I want to play a video game, I play it myself, and that's the end of the matter. But in any case, uh, the Speed Demos Archive and some other people organize a charity stream twice annually, once in the summer, once in the winter. And this past one raised over one and a half million dollars uh, for a cancer charity, yeah. which is amazing. It was. I remember somebody posted some stats and said there was like three or four percent of the total funding for that charity. Yeah, that's a significant percentage. That's nuts. I uh, and they're going to do it again next year, and they're going to. Uh, the summer one's traditionally Doctors Without Borders, right? So that's pretty much yes. all of your diseases covered. Yeah. There's specifically cancer, and then there's everything else in the summer. 
Yeah, and, and Games Done Quick last year, they only hit like half a million, didn't they? Uh, no, last year was the first time they cracked a million, although okay. it wasn't as much as this year. Yeah. The stream always gets, or so far, I mean, we'll see next year, it gets less than a million. And then when you get the uh, their tie-ins from Twitch donating all their ad revenue. Right. And uh, the Humble Bundle giving them their cut of, of the tie-in bundle they do. Right. Those are huge, huge donations themselves, I think. Yeah. Uh, the Humble Bundle this year was something like 160000 on its own. Wow. Yeah, I I was able to catch a couple of the really amazing things live, uh, mainly the Tetris run. Oh my god, the Tetris. Like, I had seen uh, that specific Tetris mode before, like years ago, like early 2000s or something, when they showed some footage of it on like tech TV or something. Mm -hmm. But I had never seen anybody play it live, and it was mind-blowing. So I guess before we get into some other things, let's just share some of the uh, the runs we think are definitely worth people checking out if you haven't seen yeah. yet. I'm totally on board with Tetris. Absolutely. Yeah, Tetris was great. There was... Um, uh, Super Mario Brothers Lost Levels. Yes. With, also known as uh, Doki Doki Panic. <laughs> yeah, uh, I forget the name of that commentator, but he was, he was great. Uh, he was great. Uh, usually, I don't go for just playing a game really fast. Mm -hmm. uh if i'm if you're gonna show me a full week of uninterrupted speed runs that's not the kind i go for but this guy was so much fun on the mic he was yeah uh, i think his name was big john maybe yeah yeah that's yeah. him big john so cool so much fun to watch uh and it's only like half an hour <laughs> yeah it's short too uh for super mario brothers 2 or as it's known in japan the lost levels <laughs> that's really great yeah it's I'm the same as you. I generally go for the runs with the weird exploits and, you know, all the crazy glitches and stuff. Uh, but that was a really good, like, just normal straight through run. Uh, Umahara Kawase? I that missed one, that one. It, it's funny because the way they did the commentary, it was supposed to be... Uh, well, if you don't know the game, it's a Super Nintendo, I think, mm -hmm. right? Yep. It's a Super Nintendo physics-based platformer that has a uh, sub-five-minute path. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're really if you're good enough at, at the the pendular physics, it's very tricky. Uh, but the way they did it was they had the guy doing the fastest pass, and they had a pre-written uh, commentary that a guy was reading off. And uh, the the runner was just having bad luck. So while he's doing f uh, uh, a performance that's far better than I could for for darn sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and he still gets a pretty good time. Like, the, uh, they're cracking up because he keeps getting stuck on a few different enemies and the script is now running ahead of him. Like, there's one point where they timed out the script so that uh, by now we should be on the last screen and the whole crowd starts laughing and it's really <laughs> great. Uh, the bad games block, really good. Oh, I, mi I missed that. That's another part I need to watch. There's a weird thing where speedrunners just do crazy things to find exploits and then say it's like, oh, found a, a lazy programming loophole. But like, you were never supposed to find that. But then the yeah. bad games block, they really <laughs> mean it. It's, it's, I think the best one for that that I saw this year was Super Pitfall. Oh, man. Like, I can't even describe what is wrong with that game. You have to <laughs> just everyone watch the Super Pitfall run. It's amazing. Yeah. It's so bad. I miss that whole block, but I do know that uh, Alex Navarro from Giant Bomb did a speed run of Big Rigs over the road racing. Yes. Because apparently there is actually an optimal path for Big Rigs. <laughs> it does involve crashing. Yeah. Because everything in Big Rigs involves crashing the game to desktop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a part that was not in the, the awful games part, but might as well have been, was a speed run I saw of Sonic Heroes. Oh, I did not catch Sonic Heroes. So I didn't see the entire thing, but they... they... I know they had Dark Spine Sonic uh, do some of the Sonic stuff. Yeah, he's I, can't cool. remember, I can't remember if he was doing Sonic Heroes or not, but... Uh... Uh, I know him because he found a lot of cool strats for Sonic 06. Oh, so that's right. So if you're right. wondering if there's someone trying to turn... Trying to make Sonic 06's glitches predictable and usable, there is. <laughs> mm -hmm. And... It makes it even crazier than you'd think. <laughs> uh, but like they're, you know, because when you're playing Sonic Heroes, you can play the game with different teams of three characters and they were taking donations to vote on, you know, which team was picked. And I think they went with 
team Amy or whatever. It was like Amy Rose and Big the Cat and somebody else, Cream the Rabbit or something. I think it's Cream. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the glitches you can do with Big the Cat are amazing. Uh, <laughs> there were there was a part where like they got they finished the run so quickly that they were just going back because they had extra time. They're going back and showing other glitches they knew of. And there's a part where, like, as Big the Cat, you just, like, press a, a button on a wall repeatedly, and it makes his legs, like, invert and slowly, like, crumple in on each other and then poke out from his skull. <laughs> um, <laughs> there are tons of other glitches involving Big the Cat, just, like, clipping through everything, just flying without giving a shit. Uh, it was really great from what I saw. There are... I saw a bit of the, uh, the glitch demo where they were doing Team Chaotix. And at least the ones I saw weren't anything entertaining like that, but they mm. were legitimately game breaking things. Yeah. Like getting, making your fly meter infinite and you just, okay, go to the end of the level now. Uh, yep. Yep. Half-Life 2 episode two. Which, yes. Uh, I think the first half and the end are great mm -hmm. because the second half has more things that for now, at least are actually required. So it's more of that. Just doing it really well. Yeah, there, there are a couple times where he's just you just have to sit through cutscenes, like the Strider fight, just and the, the Strider fight. Just doing that amazingly, but you're still doing that and you're waiting for them to it. spawn. Yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah, the first half of that run is pretty amazing. Like, I mean, I was just playing part of that today, and I didn't see anything I played in that speed run. <laughs> Yeah, there's uh, there's that, there's that a skip where uh, he does the backwards ramp uh, yeah. in, instead of the the waves of ant lions coming in. Yeah, he just ramps it. That's crazy. Yeah, but you've even if you skip over a lot of the second half, you gotta uh, do you, you gotta see the bonus ending. Uh, oh yes, yeah. Which um, th there are some models. There's some th that are supposed to spawn in the ending of Half-Life 2 Episode 2, but there's a way to make them not appear, but the ending plays out anyway in a very <laughs> different manner, so yeah. just, it's great. It's great. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> a lot of things on my list are from the second half of the week, because as it got on, I got more invested and more interested. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was another run that was really great? I didn't watch Kingdom Hearts, but I did watch all the karaoke bits. Oh, I miss a karaoke, damn it. Uh, um, they're all good, but the Gaston song is especially good, because the guy that did most of the singing sounds just like LeFou. Like, oh my god. seriously. Wow. <laughs> I, I will have to dock at points, because it got Let It Go stuck in my head for a few days. No. And when you uh, are up all night with violent food poisoning... <laughs> Having lines like can't hold it back anymore rattling around in your head is not what you want. So uh, some demerits, some demerits there from Kingdom Hearts. Getting pretty unlucky with the, the, the sickness recently. Uh, we are not down with the sickness. <laughs> well, we're down, but not out. Uh, yeah. I watched the Vanquish one. Uh, I missed that one. That's oh, when we played it one handed, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. And uh, an interesting thing, it wasn't just like, let me show off how I can do this, but the, the runner, uh, half coordinated, he uh, runs things one handed exclusively because he does not have fine motor control in his right hand. Oh, okay. Huh. He's also the world record holder, uh, head and shoulders above everyone else who speedruns Vanquish. Really? Holy shit. Like, he says, er, early in the run, he says at one point that uh, the next fastest time even taking times that don't have proof behind them is 13 minutes slower than his record. Wow. 13 minutes. I didn't know that he was like the, I mean, I didn't know the, the lack of motor control thing, but I didn't know that he had like the record too. Holy he crap. He is the guy to wow. run Vanquish. Uh, also, it's just a really cute run to watch. Uh, there, It's him and a few of his friends on the couch and they're really chummy and just really cool guys. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not quite as hype as uh, as Big John from Super Mario <laughs> Brothers, but they're a fun bunch. Uh, two runs I watched that were uh, pretty great uh, were the Banjo-Kazooie run, mm -hmm. just because I know that game pretty well. And it was really interesting to see how they were just flat out skipping some things. Not even with bugs, just really clever, uh, just cleverly using some of the game mechanics to skip things you otherwise would not be able to skip. Uh, and also Majora's Mask, because there's some really strange 
glitches that were found like just this year or something. Wow, that's great. Majora's, I love that. Majora's Mask was like an hour and a half <laughs> for a game that generally has lots of stuff that gates you from skipping things. But yeah, they were, they, there was like a bug where they didn't activate any of the warp points, but because of a bug, uh, they fell out of the map and then hit a warp point that wasn't loaded in yet. And because of that, wherever their cursor was last on the, the pause menu map, they could just warp there without even having a warp point there. <laughs> and so they exploited that throughout the entire run. Let's see. Taskbot. Fantastic. Always. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you see what Taskbot got up to this year? Uh, I didn't see the second. I, I only saw the first thing that was getting the, the IRC chat or whatever loaded uh, into Super yeah, Nintendo. Th uh, that's the... From the first block, but it wasn't the, on yeah. the only thing. Uh, yeah, I missed did. what the other things were. Uh, let's see. They, they had a total control glitch where uh, I think they, they put this up on YouTube or something. It wasn't debuted mm. uh, this week, but where they got a copy of Super Mario World to run Super Mario Brothers. What? Yeah. Okay. All if, right. If you uh, put in the right inputs and you get in... You, you can use your button prompts to uh, edit memory, and they edited in uh, uh, Super Mario Brothers. Wow. And which is basically a version of what they did with uh, Pokemon Red, or was it Blue? It was a Pokemon mm -hmm. on the Super Game Boy. Yeah. And so they, they used that to have a, a game, a uh, uh, SNES run the Twitch chat. <laughs> and, and display and be able to talk to it. Yeah. They brought that back again for the second uh, taskbot thing, and then they added even more commands so that through doing that, the Twitch chat could change colors on the uh, task video's uh, webpage. Oh, wow. And they gave the chat control of uh, remote control of the video camera <laughs> on th the couch. <laughs> so that was cool. Yeah. The last one I have on my list is the uh, blindfolded run of Ocarina of Time. That's the one I really want to watch. Oh, it's great. It's, it, it makes you really think about game design and how uh, everything in Ocarina of Time has a sound. Yeah. Like, every specific thing has a specific sound to it. And that's, it's cool that it's so encompassing. Like It's one of those things that f sort of fades into the background when you're playing it to make mm -hmm. a total experience. But it lets you remove the visual part of the experience and still do crazy speedruns. Yeah. Was he doing, like, glitches, too? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> they, they took a few more tries than normal, but yes. Right. Wow. And there's even one part where he starts showing off, like, okay, uh, there's a trick I could do here, but uh, since it takes a frame-perfect pause, I'm just going to do the first few steps uh, out of habit. I'm not going to a risk doing it and he does it and keeps on going and then the guy next to him's like uh you, you got the perfect frame anyhow uh when it was wow. already too late to go back wow. because they're like not allowed to give him hints or anything he just has to figure out what's where by smacking things with a sword and seeing what sound it makes right and remembering every single room in ocarina of time oh geez yeah watching all the speed runs made me think what if i did a speed run yeah what, what do you think you'd run I don't know that that like I was thinking like what's you know, what's the Bastion world record? Are there any Bastion like? Skips? Oh, I don't know. You That'd know, be a good one. There was a time where uh, I was semi speed running Bastion, but it was because when it first came out in the 360, uh, there were leaderboards, and mm -hmm. the the leaderboards because I was way into Bastion, and I wanted to be like on the top of that leaderboard, but it wasn't like. The, it just gave you a score, and nobody knows how that score is determined. So I, w I was near the top. I was in, like, the top nice. 200 people or something like that, and with a score of, like, 835. And it seemed like part of the score was just, like, completion of the game, like, on top of, um, you know, getting everything, finding all the collectibles, upgrading all the weapons to max. Also, like, hearing each unique individual voice clip the narrator had to see it, say seemed to go towards that. But there were people who still had a higher score than me. I was never able to figure out uh, what they had done that I hadn't. Hmm. But yeah, I was, like, basically speedrunning it at a point just to see what would affect the score. Nice. I don't remember, I don't remember how fast I got at it, but I... 
I, Bastion is probably up there and things I could probably speed run. Um, Beyond Good and Evil is another one. I bet that has some really interesting... I, I'm betting uh, there are some definite glitches in there where you could skip things just by clipping through stuff. I mean, if, if it's so inspired by Zelda dungeon design, why not? <laughs> I did watch a speedrun of Beyond Good and Evil once a few years ago, and one of the tricks they were doing was, you know, because there are multiple uh, parts throughout the game where you need your partner to do an action with you, like step on another button. Right. And they were basically, like, manipulating the AI so that they were running past all the monsters so they didn't have to fight them, and also tricking, like, Paige to immediately walking on the button <laughs> nice. so that the door would open right away. Uh, but yeah, that'd be an interesting one to to do. I was also thinking, like, thinking, like, what would a speedrun of the Wonderful 101 be like? And oh. I determined it would be a nightmare. <laughs> one, because there, you know, there's a fair a couple of auto scrolling things that you can't change the speed of unless there's somehow a glitch to skip them. I'm just thinking, like, what would be the optimal route for like doing a speed run from a completely new game and not like a new game plus, like. Would it be faster to never recruit the unique, wonderful ones? Because every time you recruit them, you have to watch the recruitment screen. Or would it be faster to grab them because then you you start with more further down the road? Right. Yeah. Would, would you have to? Uh. Would it, there'd have to be like some kind of route planning for figuring out how many of each type of wonderful one you would need. Like, <laughs> I need more fists so I can do more multi morphs or whatever because that's faster than using the hammer on this boss or something like that. You know, like. That's the stuff that started running through my head. I was like, oh my god. This is just like all routing and no play makes Jack a tall boy going <laughs> yeah. on here. The only uh, thing I know for sure that would be be used in that speedrun to make some things really fast is using uh, the attack liner combined with the bomb. Yeah. Because that can skip a couple things really fast. Like the second form of Jirginga in the final boss fight, if you, when you, you know, knock him out and you can just punch his eye a whole bunch, if you hit him with a really big bomb and then run the attack liner into him as much as possible, you can kill him in like 15 seconds. Nice. Yeah. So, there's my speed run. Six hours. <laughs> so, uh, to talk about speed, uh, speed running in general, I think my favorite thing about the speed running community is that it is such a community. Like, yeah. Every th run you see is built on tricks found by a, like a dozen other people before them, mm -hmm. <laughs> which are adapted from other tricks that are uh, uh, no longer in favor because they've been improved on. It, it's and I, I really enjoy how everyone. There's a sense that the people know where these came from and they get credit and they give credit, and there are these, th and that there are these events where where people come together. At least those who can mm -hmm. uh, ma make it to. Uh, was it the Washington, D.C. area, I think? Yeah, it was near D.C. It might have been yeah. in Virginia. Uh, a lot of things in northern Virginia are near D.C. That checks out, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, something, like, at least from a lot of the runners that were at that, a lot of them were, like, very nice and, like, well-spoken people, too. Mm -hmm. Which uh, I like. I know they're definitely, like, drama queens and, and weird people in the speedrunning community. But I, I didn't see I think too many a of them this year. Of just having less, like <laughs> yeah, I am. I didn't see too many this year, at least from what I watched. The only guy who was like weird was like that one dude for the Sonic Two speed run. <laughs> that I, guy was on, got on my nerves. <laughs> I guess it also helps when you're one big, or I suppose two big events are all about raising money for. To, to stamp out worldwide disease yeah a, a, rather than uh competitions to to crown the best folks yeah and it's also hard to be the best speedrunner because you're gonna specialize right you know mm -hmm. and there's a million other games and there's probably eight or so different kinds of speedrun for your one game anyhow so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think it lends itself as well to, to prima donnaism. Yeah. Like, every year I've gotten more into speedruns to the point where I'm considering, like, maybe sometime I should try a speedrun. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think I could ever get serious about it because... Or at least finding... Uh, I don't think I'd ever do a speedrun, but I think it'd be cool to, like, see a trick and like, okay, you say this one's kind of easy, there's, like, eight frames... I'll give it a shot. Yeah. yeah. At least trying out some of those cool glitches. Try, try out some things. See, see if I can manage it. Um, 
Oh, that reminds me. This didn't happen during the event, but it happened a little bit before it started where a dude got, like, the new world record for Ocarina of Time. That oh, wasn't yeah. tool-assisted. Uh, and there's, like, a video of when he was streaming it, and that dude, like, loses it when he, <laughs> like, f gets, like, the final big exploit mm -hmm. is in Ganon's tower, and you have to... It's like one of those Ocarina of Time glitches where you just slide backwards really fast. And you begin that glitch by getting hit by one of the boulders falling in Ganon's Tower, except they're randomly generated where they will be. So he just had to hope he got a good rock and was able to get hit by it so that he could go back really fast at the correct angle to shoot out of the map and skip, like, the whole escape the tower sequence. Fantastic. Uh, and he, like, cries or something, and it's pretty yeah. great. Because <laughs> there's also, like, a counter somewhere on the stream saying, like, how many attempts he'd done. He was on, like, his 25th hundred attempt or something. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I mean, that has to be, like, of all time, right? I mean... Maybe? Like, it I can't think, be since so. the last time he, he hit yeah, a record. I, 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 yeah, but that, that speedrun is also pretty amazing. Uh, and it's just, like, stuff like Ocarina of Time, it's amazing how, like, that game's been out for so long, and people still are finding more and more, like, crazy exploits mm -hmm. to get even faster. Uh, so, that's, uh, that's Agdic. Mm -hmm. Uh, look out, about six months from now, there'll be a Sigdic, and I, <laughs> it'll probably also be great. I see no reason to think it won't be. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a really fun event. Mm-hmm. So that brings us to our Ask segment. Uh, this was sent to uh, our email address, uh, is chipcheesem at chipandironicus.com. If you'd like to submit a question for the ask segment, send it there. And if you want us to actually use it, here's some guidelines. We're really looking for things that can carry a segment, by which mm -hmm. I mean are interesting, and we can chat about it for 15 minutes or so. Yeah, rather than just like a short yes or no type thing. If it can be uh, wrapped up in a sentence satisfactorily, that's, I'm, that's not what we're looking for, unfortunately. There are, however... Many other places you can send us questions like that, like either of our Ask FM pages. Mm. Although I will say there are a couple I will just clear out very quickly because they are just asked so much. Uh, the Zone of the Enders LP is gone right now because I, did, I after a while I wasn't happy with my commentary, so I took it down. A new one will be up later on, along with the Zone of the Enders 2 LP. Whenever you decide to do that, yes, I will do Phantom Pain, but only after it's been out for a while because I will do Ground Zeroes and Phantom Pain together as one game, uh, and. I think that's it. Okay. Uh, do you have a... I, I didn't copy down the name, or I don't think I ever have it. Do you have a credit for this question? This question is from Summer. Uh, but the question is, uh, what are we looking forward to in 2015 games-wise? That's not the uh, wording, but that's the question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so 2015 could possibly be a really good year. At least with what I'm into. I looked up some lists and I see some titles that are interesting, to say the least. Yeah, uh, if if you just go by what is known to be coming out this year from Nintendo alone, there's a lot of really good stuff there. Xenoblade Chronicles X. Yes. Mario definitely. Maker. Mario Maker. Splatoon. Uh, yep. Zelda Wii U. I don't know if that's going to make this year. Who knows? Who knows? That'd be cool, though. Yoshi's Woolly World. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kirby and the Canvas Curse? Yep, that's coming out in February. I mean, it's coming out, but I don't know if I'm looking forward to it as much as any of the other things I just named. Mm-hmm. Uh, Codename Steam, for you Fire Emblem people out there who just don't want to deal with Fire Emblem anymore. <laughs> uh, Star Fox? They say it's coming out before Zelda, so... But, yeah, there, there's, your Zelda, there, there's your Nintendo lineup, and if they actually all come out this year... Get dang! Majora's Mask 3D? Majora's Mask 3D. That's pretty cool. That's right around the corner, isn't it? That's real uh, soon. It's, there's no actual oh, there's release no date? date yet, but there's a Nintendo Direct tomorrow, and I guarantee it'll be announced there. <laughs> it's supposed to be, like, in spring at the latest. But yeah, and on top of that, like, stuff other than Nintendo, like, things I know of are, you know, there's going to be Phantom Pain. Rapid Fire. Scalebound. What do you yep. think about Scalebound? Uh, there is like no information about Scalebound, but it's a platinum thing, so I'm really interested in it. Hopefully, it's cool. Bloodborne. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty interested in Bloodborne. That looks really cool. I like the aesthetic of it a lot more than the Souls games, so I'm already drawn in more because of that. It also looks a little faster, which I like. Witcher three. Uh, possibly. I haven't played Witcher two yet. Witcher one's really janky and hilarious, but all right, something 
that I'm sure people are going to be asking us about a lot. Uncharted 4. Yes. Uh, they, <laughs> they showed, they finally showed some footage uh, at the VGAs or, or the Sony event after the VGAs last month. Uh, and at first glance, it looks like it's just more Uncharted. But when you look through it more, you can see that there's some really interesting stuff there. Mainly, you aren't required to kill all the bad guys to progress. You can stealth by them now. Even if you've been caught, if you hide, they'll lose track of you, and then you can just move along. It looks more open because there are like multiple root, multiple routes now, and you can yeah. kind of go whichever one you want. It looks really exciting because of that stuff. While we're talking Uncharted, I want to circle back to the last bit, the Uncharted uh, speedrun from AGDQ. Yes, also, that's right. Even if you only watch the uh, climbing the invisible fortress... <laughs> Which goes right into the, the Vine launch glitch. Even if you only watch those 30 seconds, you have to watch that. Yes. Apparently, the, the people who did that are fans of ours, or at least the guy on the couch who's commentating is. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, we, I think we, we retweeted them. Uh, I sent a donation in while they were running, but unfortunately, it didn't get read. I was hoping uh, it would get run or read while they were doing it. But. Oh, well. I didn't do any donations for call outs because all the ones I would have were like when I was sleeping or busy so like well if I'm not going to see it <laughs> if mm. I'm not going to hear my own self gratification why should I go in for my own self gratification <laughs> Yeah. Uh, uh, save that for the end uh, Minecraft story mode uh, <laughs> I, I'm not really into Minecraft like I when it first came out and it was like a a beta game that was constantly being updated. Uh, I played it for a little bit and had fun with it, but like I got my fun out of it and mm -hmm. now I just don't want to play it ever again. I don't know. If I were much younger, I would be way into that game. Yeah. Mirror's Edge. Uh, I love the first Mirror's Edge despite all of its flaws. I really hope Mirror's Edge 2 is like good <laughs> mirror's edge 2 or as it's also known mirror's edge how are <laughs> they getting away with that that's it, oh yeah i forgot entirely about that mirror's edge 2 is a reboot of a one game series so far <laughs> uh because the story for mirror's edge is real bad and it looks like they're trying to reboot it or do like some kind of origin story just so they can like sweep the first game story under the rug because it was dumb uh here's one final fantasy 15 uh, yeah, I'm really into that game. I'm interested. I know I'm not going to play it, but I am interested in Final Fantasy 15. So I love boy band road trips. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's like Final Fantasy 15 was announced like, I don't know, s six, seven years ago or something like that. It was like announced that? before the 13 sequels. I, I yeah. mean, it was supposed to be one of them. It was originally called 13 Verses, right? Yeah, so the weird thing, when Final Fantasy XIII came out, they announced the Novella Crystallis series, which is a hilarious name, <laughs> and it was, it was all supposed to be um, games with incredibly similar worlds or like mythos more than the average Final Fantasy is, uh, so it was supposed to be like Final Fantasy XIII, 13 Verses, which is not related to thirteen. uh but has a lot of the same similar story setup or something like that. It was weird. And then there's 13 Ajito, which was like a card game, which I think came out under a different name and is like a mobile game or something. I would imagine that Final Fantasy 15 has also shed all of that story stuff. It l seems... Well, the thing is... Because if they those... didn't run out of it in uh, 13 2 and 13 Lightning Returns, then, yeah, come on, you're, you're done, you're finished. There's been enough of it. Yeah, a lot of the story stuff they show in the latest trailers is actually still really similar to the story stuff they've shown from the very first footage, like setting and like some of the pre-rendered cutscenes. But what all I know is that it's basically like the boy band are like a royal part of a royal family. Not nah, you had it right the first time. But the, the boy band's a part of a boy band. Yes. Um, and there's like these two anime dads. One's uh -huh. a good anime dad, one's an evil anime dad, but they're both, like, mafia dads or something. Okay. And one of them okay. wants a crystal, and the other guy's like, no, you can't have that crystal. And then the boy band goes on a road trip? Like, it, I don't know. Uh, I'm mostly into the road trip part. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping it'll be basically a, a RPG remake of the Britney Spears film Crossroads. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, great movie. No Man's Sky... 
I'm excited for this to come out so I can figure out what the heck you do in No Man's Sky. Uh, that game is absolutely beautiful and flying into one planet and then out of it and into across space into another one is so cool looking. I just, yeah, I just want to know what you do in it and if it's going to have enough substance or if it's just going to be a spore situation where when it comes out, it's really shallow and doesn't do what it makes your imagination thinks it's going to do. Mm -hmm. Cautiously optimistic about that game. Here's one I think I might stump you on. Let okay. It Die. Uh, Let It Die is the Suda51 game? God damn it. <laughs> it is the uh, multiplayer, like, manhunt style game. I don't think... Uh, well, he has a producer credit because it's yeah. coming from Grasshopper. So yeah. you never know what that means. <laughs> yeah, who knows? He's not director or designer. So yeah. I do know that I, lo I love the logo of that game because it has the Grim Reaper riding a skateboard on it. <laughs> Now, what I saw was that it was going to be free to play. Maybe. And come with a companion smartphone app. Yeah, I think so. I f from what I read about that game, I remember uh, Let It Die is like a multiplayer manhunt style thing, you know, where every player, when they start out new, they have like no clothes and no weapons. And it's just like a, a food chain thing where you just have to like try and kill the person, take their stuff. Uh, and I remember from concept stuff they showed there the game revolves around the idea of the death cloud okay okay where you know there have been other games that talk about cloud technology like the drive guitar stuff or whatever that goofy stuff for like forza or whatever it was um it's basically uh when you die it's like a permadeath for that character but that character gets thrown into the death cloud is like an evil pissed off ghost that just roams the game or something uh, and if your ghost can get a kill on somebody, like something good happens to you, like you get your stuff back or you level up so or something like that. You, oh, hypothetically, you get mm -hmm. super good at the game. You're like the best. You're the best. Yeah. You kill all of the people. Mm -hmm. You get a crazy awesome character. Mm -hmm. Something goes wrong and you die. Is your old character now the final boss of Let It Die? It might be. That's crazy. <laughs> like, I remember some of the stuff they talked about Let It Die actually sounded kind of cool. They haven't shown much of that game yet, but the the concept of that has me interested, and I'm, again, willing to actually try another Grasshopper game, even though I've been burnt like the last two times. <laughs> uh, let's see. Broken Age Part 2. I am so on board. I loved have, Part 1. I loved it so oh, did much. did you play it? I did. Okay. Yeah, me too. Uh, I I play it all in like one of sitting. Everything on th this list of games I thought we might have at least something to talk about. It's the one I'm most likely to play. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I play all of Broken Age Part 1 in one sitting and I was pretty happy with it. I wish there were a couple more puzzles and that they were a little more difficult, but I love the setting and well, that's what everything part else. Two is. Yeah. Like, d d the, the ending, like, I guess the second ending where the endings collide, jaw dropped, what the hell? Yeah, the the whole twist, <laughs> the whole twist to that game caught me off guard, and it was like, whoa, like that was actually really cool. Now, did you play the two characters side by side, or just all one, then all the other? All one, then all the other. I did the same, and now knowing what I know, I kind of wish I did it the other way. Hmm, yeah, I wonder what that would be like. Maybe I'll have to do that next time I play it before, like, yeah. right on the cusp of part two coming out. Uh, Silent Hills. Uh, yeah, I'm really interested in that. I just now got to play, played and beat all of Silent Hill 1 and 2 earlier this year. I had never really played a Silent Hill. Uh, but after playing those and then playing PT and knowing that Kojima and is on it, I'm like super interested in Silent Hills because I've always thought Kojima would be pretty great as a director for a horror game. Just mm -hmm. because of the stuff he likes to do frequently in his games with the fourth wall stuff and all that. Yeah. And like what was already shown in PT is like really promising. Like now, you, a you've whole played game. PT, correct? Yes. Uh, did you did you get all the way through it? Uh, yeah. Did Did you whisper Jareth into the mic? Uh, I did, and it worked. Okay. <laughs> there you go, folks. It works. It worked. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm pretty excited for Silent Hills. Okay. Um. What if you had to narrow it down to just? I I won't ask one. Three things. Biggest hype. Go biggest hype would prob from things i know right now it would probably be uh zelda mm -hmm. and then probably phantom pain and mm -hmm. then probably final fantasy 15 
Uh, I'm going to go with Xenoblade, Zelda Wii U, and yeah, Broken Age Part 2. Hmm, okay. Oh, man. Actually, yeah, Xenoblade. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Maybe kick off. Okay, like Final Fantasy 15 and Xenoblade <laughs> are like tied there, yeah. honestly. Uh, yeah. When I finally get around to, to buying a Wii U and not just complaining that I don't have one all the time, mm-hmm. I, I think uh, Woolly World is going to bump up. Yes, Woolly World Woolly looks Woolly World great. just looks so charming. It's <laughs> like, it sucks because like Yoshi's Island is so, so good and both of its sequels on the DS are so, so bad because they, <laughs> they're, they're both made by um, the same developer that's like a, a, a second party developer that Nintendo has and they don't make great games. Like, I have Yoshi's Island DS or whatever and it has like the most uninspired level design with some of the worst music and like Yoshi's New Island or whatever for the 3DS is more of the same because it's the same developers even though the developer's studio name is different now. Oh, of course, that makes sense. That studio got shut down, then all those people went into a new one, and then they got commissioned to make another Yoshi game. And it's like, <laughs> damn it! It could have been good, maybe. But uh, yeah, having good feel do this new Yoshi game. Uh, uh, and so, I, I can save you all a Google. Good feel is the people who made uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn and they also made uh, Wario... Wario Land Shake It. Yes. So good. Both of yeah. them are so good. Yeah, so... From all the footage they've shown, it looks more like an actual successor to Yoshi's Island. Which both of those games honestly were in sort of a veiled way. Yeah. And they, they took the veil off, folks. Mm-hmm. So, and yeah, I love, I love the look of the, the yarn games. I am, I am really into, there's two things I'm really into with Nintendo right now. One, all their games have like a jazz soundtrack right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and two... They keep making these these adorable games like Woolly World and also the Kirby game, which everything is made out of clay, uh, and it looks so nice. Like, if you look at Kirby, you can see there's little thumbprints on him. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, uh, here's a question. Uh, what do you think uh, will be the big... What, what do you think gaming in 2015 will be known for, if you have any idea to predict? Because I think 2014 um, is going to be the year where everything broke. Yes. Uh, especially the last few months, every big name release was just a mess <laughs> coming out in that year-end push. Uh, I think 2015 might be the year where Sony and Microsoft clean up their act a little bit. and Well, not Sony and Microsoft. Uh, more like Ubisoft. <laughs> uh, I we think can only be... hope. It was... <laughs> yeah. Uh, It'll be where they at least attempt to clean up their act, and things are a little less broken, and I think there'll be a lot of I'm sorry's happening, but maybe like kind of passive-aggressive I'm sorry's, where it's like, fuck you, still buy our $60 game, please. Um, yeah. And I think it'll be the year that Nintendo keeps continuing to be really good. <laughs> well, let's see, I'm looking at this list. I mean, I'm the one who put the list together. I don't know all of your other... Th- things you're looking forward to that I didn't put on. Uh, you pretty much hit almost but, everything. Uh, Scalebound and I guess Bloodborne are really the only ones that aren't first or second party games. Yeah. And, and Let It Die. And Let It Die, yes. Uh, yeah, there's not much as far well, as third and, party. And, and, and Xenoblade. I, that's and Xenoblade, yeah, I suppose. Two games Actually, in a row doesn't make them owned by Nintendo as far as I know. Yeah, well, I mean, Nintendo did buy them, I think. Oh, well... I think they're second party now. Erase that, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, there aren't too many third-party things right now. I'm thinking it's, it's just a waiting game. I think they're probably just waiting till E3 to announce any more of that stuff. Yeah, because, like, yeah. I don't know, maybe they're waiting to put more polish on stuff this time around so they embarrass themselves less. There's only a couple th- third-party things coming out I know of one of them's that awful battlefield game where you're cops um, and you're like rappelling down buildings and blowing them up with RPGs so you can stop criminals. Oh, which, yeah, uh, I think that's the next battlefield. Yeah, the next battlefield. Oh, and Hardline. there's also the next Rainbow Six where you're doing similar things, but it's in your Rainbow yeah. Six mission based sort of way. Yeah, I think the Rainbow Six is a lot more promised because there, there was a beta for Hardline. Uh, and from what I hear, it's like a really bad like battlefield mod, basically. 
uh, with a potentially offensive single player campaign because, uh, you know, cops right now. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's always good to uh, point out that the games that are probably going to be the most interesting and that we're going to be thinking a lot about are mm -hmm. the ones we haven't heard of yet. Yeah. Because that tends to always be true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm interested to see what happens with VR stuff this year. You think so? You think, uh, I mean, I don't know if it'll happen this the, year. The rift but... is going to open. It's coming. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know if it'll be this year. I don't, I haven't followed the rift enough to know, like, what their, their launch plans are, if they have them yet. But, uh, you know, Sony is also making the Morpheus as a competitor. Oh, yeah. That thing that looks like a rooftop luggage rack. For yeah. Your car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm interested to see if that VR stuff will, like, come out this year and if it'll have any sort of actual big impact outside of like the group that already is into the idea of vr and i'm wondering how many people are going to throw up if vr does get big well i i don't know i don't think if it does it'll last long because mm -hmm. okay uh look at 3d movies yeah, that's the thing I always think it, of when I think of VR. That seemed like it was going to last a while, and it did for a few years. I mean, I guess even if uh, virtual reality headsets last the rest of this console cycle, yeah, then that's really not that long in the long term. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I have a hard time thinking of like what the impact of that stuff will be, especially because I haven't actually been able to demo any kind of VR headsets yet. I would love to. One, to see if... I will get sick because I'm I'm generally not the kind of person who gets sick from motion stuff or mm -hmm. or like the 3D like having I can turn the 3D slider all the way up to max and 3DS I'm not going to get a headache but I don't know VR stuff still looks like it could make me throw up maybe or fall over <laughs> if it's convincing enough well just be sure to be properly seated mm -hmm. and then when you get the the 3D Oculus Rift uh, remake of Metal Gear Solid 2 hell yeah engage no clip and you can finally find out what's going on down there <laughs> come on Ryden, what have you got mm -hmm. just imagine first person vr you can look up at that guy who pees on your head <laughs> wow turns out he's actually just it, it was really bad lemonade oh okay he's Man. just pouring it out damn it kojima always hiding stuff from me so uh i guess that's uh that's it for now we'll be back with you guys next month mm -hmm. uh remember again if you want to submit to the ask uh segment that's chip at chip and ironicus.com mm -hmm. and feel free to give this a listen on your is, is itunes up yet uh by the time this is up it will be up on itunes all right give us a give us a rating give us a review uh show some people that if you think we said anything worthwhile Share it with people and, you know, give them a timestamp for the good thing. And then just like, uh, who cares about the rest? Mm -hmm. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Have a great day, everybody. You know, have a great month. Yeah. Good night, folks. Good night.